cheetahs normally kill their prey by dripping it during the chase. Students are required to submit copies of their assignment by the end of this Tuesday. Employees who'd like to volunteer for the company's journal can meet the HR tomorrow. The library will stay open until midnight during the exam period. The television programs are major source of pleasure to young and old people nowadays. Seventy percent of attendance in class is mandatory to avoid fine. Cosmology is the study of the origin, evolution, and eventual fate of the universe. Dogs are considered to be the most preferable pet because of its faithfulness and loyalty. There are numerous theories on the evolution of human and the origin of life.
The television is a technological invention that allows us to view all the important events happening around the world. Mr. Baker is going to fill the proxy in today's lecture on cosmology. Read the instructions carefully before you start playing the board game. We may soon have better coffee through chemistry. Researchers have identified the key chemicals that can sometimes turn a sublime cup of joe into a bitter experience. The researchers announced their grounds-breaking findings August 21st at the National Meeting of the American Chemical Society in Boston. Studies over the last few years have found some 30 compounds that contribute to coffee bitterness. Said study leader Thomas Hoffman, everybody thinks that caffeine is the main bitter compound in coffee, but that's definitely not the case. In fact, he thinks only about 50 15% of coffee's bite is caffeine-based. Using the analytical tool chromatography, along with taste testing, the scientists determined that bitterness is due to two main types of compounds that form during roasting. These are chlorogenic acid lactones, the major bitterness contributors in light to medium roasts, and phenylindanes, which the lactones turn into upon further cooking, and which account for most of the bitterness in dark roasts. So perhaps in the future you'll be ordering a grande half-calf dephenylindanerated caramel mochaccino. My grandmother was always a bit of a chatty Cathy, that is, until she was a passenger in a car. Then she'd fall silent. Her reason? Driving a car is difficult work and requires concentration. Or so my grandfather told her. Turns out he had a point. Drivers with passengers are 60% more likely to have a car accident that results in hospitalization. That's according to research from the George Institute for International Health. But as much as passengers distract drivers, nothing beats mobile phones for increasing the risk of crashing. The Institute analyzed nearly 500 serious accidents and found that the use of a cell phone, even hands-free, increased the likelihood of accidents by four times. While researchers haven't figured out exactly how car conversations impair driving, the effects contribute to the 40,000 automobile deaths in the U.S. annually. That's about the size of Fenway Park. So with new cars being souped up with TVs, internet access, and more cup holders than you can imagine, there's a Disneyland of distraction inside. Hmm, maybe it's time to unplug and focus our eyes and ears on the road ahead.
In the insect world, bright reds, oranges, and yellows can be a warning. Eat me at your own risk, pal. Because colorful bugs can be toxic. They often get their chemical protection from nibbling poisonous plants. But these poisons can have a flip side for us. Some fight cancer or tropical parasites that cause diseases like malaria. The idea that colorful bugs can tip us off to disease-fighting plants isn't new. But researchers at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute just backed it up with science in the journal Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment. They chose 10 plant species that kill parasites and cancer in lab tests, and 10 species that look similar but do nothing. Then they headed into the Panamanian jungle to survey hundreds of these plants for beetles and caterpillars. Turns out, they found colorful bugs on almost all the toxic plants, but less than half of the harmless plants. And black, brown, and gray bugs didn't have a preference. They ate indiscriminately. So modern-day shamans scouring the jungle for cancer-fighting drugs might just cut down on search time by keeping an eye out for brightly colored bugs. Have you ever had a nightmare about taking a math test? Math anxiety is so common that researchers use it to study how stress affects performance. At last week's AAAS meeting in San Francisco, a panel discussed math anxiety. One researcher said her study showed that the best students are the ones most likely to choke under a high-pressure test situation. That's because normally, they use their higher memory capacity to methodically work through a problem. But when the pressure's on, the good students resort to the same ineffective shortcuts the poor students use all the time. Another researcher shed some light on this, with his study showing that anxiety actually occupies working memory, wasting it instead of devoting it to the task at hand. And just being able to suppress these emotions doesn't seem to help. In fact, people with higher intelligence actually consumed more resources to keep their anxiety in check. They say their findings suggest that high-pressure tests might not be measuring what they're meant to and schools might want to try de-emphasizing their importance. Understanding all the genes and molecules involved in human disease is quite a challenge. That's why scientists study model organisms, like flies and worms and mice, that are made of the same stuff we are. Now scientists in Illinois and Israel have found a strange new model that they say mimics the molecular behavior of human cancers, the naked mole rat. These odd little creatures live in subterranean tunnels where air is at a premium, so the animals have evolved a strategy for surviving when oxygen is scarce. Well, the same is true of cancers. In a rapidly growing tumor, the cells in the center are often oxygen-deprived because blood vessels don't reach all the way inside. And the scientists are finding that mole rats and tumor cells use similar mechanisms to make the most of the little oxygen they have. In particular, the researchers have so far identified three genes that respond to plummeting oxygen levels. The genes' activity patterns are the same in mole rats and in cancer cells. Understanding how these genes work could suggest new ways of choking the life out of tumors by turning off their ability to live like mole rats. Well, malignant mole rats.
This January, the country Turkey will join a handful of European nations that require visual health warnings on every pack of cigarettes. These images include things like diseased lungs and a foot sporting a toe tag. But maybe a petri dish overrun with bacteria should make the list, because a new study shows that cigarettes are contaminated with a bevy of nasty bugs, including some that cause disease. The report will appear in the journal Environmental Health Perspectives. Burning and inhaling that heady mix of tar and nicotine, not to mention the benzene and other chemicals in tobacco smoke, can promote lung cancer and emphysema. And now it seems that cigarettes could also deliver a dose of respiratory infection. Scientists use what are called gene chips to identify the microbes present in four different brands of smokes. And the list they found reads like a syllabus for Microbiology 101. It includes Acinetobacter, Clostridium, Klebsiella, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa, all of which can make people sick. The researchers think some bugs can probably survive in the smoke. So carcinogenic. And now with bacterial pathogens. Genesis Church of the Most Holy Redeemer has held a musical celebration every year since its construction in 1592. And recently, the church has inspired debate among historians. How could its echoing chambers clearly portray the complicated music performed during the festival? A New York University doctoral student named Braxton Boren decided to find out. He recorded a choir within a non-echoing chamber. Next, he fed that audio into a computer simulation that he built based on the dimensions and materials of the church. The muddled reverberations matched actual acoustic measurements taken within the empty church, demonstrating that the simulation was accurate. Finally, Boren recreated what that music sounded like when the church was filled with sound-absorbing tapestries and people. The new simulation reduced reverberations from seven seconds long to three and a half, making the music much clearer. And so Boren settled the argument, although to some historians, he was preaching to the choir. In animals, a movement is coordinated by a cluster of neurons in the spinal cord called the Central Contract Patterns Generator, CPG. This process pr produces signals that drive muscles to contract rhythmically in ways that produce running or walking, depending on the pattern of pulses. A simple signal from the brain instructs the CPG to switch between modes such as going from standstill to walking.
Artificial intelligence, also machine intelligence, is intelligence displayed by machines, in contrast with the natural eye intelligence displayed by humans and other animals. In computer science AI research is defined as the study of intelligent agents, any device that perceives its environment and takes actions that maximize its chance of success at some goal. Reason is the capacity for consciously making sense of things, establishing and verifying facts, applying logic, and changing or justifying practices, institutions, and beliefs. It is closely associated with such characteristically human activities as philosophy, science, language, mathematics, and art and is normally considered to be a definitive characteristic of human nature. He also designed various mechanisms by which his program could become better. In what he called rote learning, the program remembered every position it had already seen, along with the terminal value of the reward function. This technique effectively extended the search depth at each of these positions. His programs re-evaluated the reward function based on input from professional games.
Loss of wetland habitat threatens dragonfly populations around the world. Dragonflies are represented in human culture on artifacts such as pottery, rock paintings, and art jewelry. They are used in traditional medicine in Japan and China, and caught for food in Indonesia. They are symbols of courage, strength, and happiness in Japan, but seen as sinister in European folklore. Temperate regions have the majority of the world's population, which leads to large cities. There are a couple factors why the climate of large city landscapes differs from the climate of rural areas. One factor is the strength of the absorption rate of builds and asphalt, which is higher than natural land. Some environmental issues that affect southern Africa are, water pollution, air pollution, land degradation, solid waste pollution, and deforestation. The environmental damage affects not only the population's health, but also the species that live in the area, while also contributing to the worldwide issue of climate change.
the sun is the predominant source of energy input to the earth. Other sources include geothermal energy from the Earth's core, tidal energy from the moon and heat from the decay of radioactive compounds. Both long and short-term variations in solar intensity are known to affect global climate. The impact of monsoon on the local weather is different from place to place. In some places there is just a likelihood of having a little more or less rain. In other places, quasi-semi-deserts are turned into vivid green grasslands where all sorts of plants and crops can flourish. Baseball is a bat and ball game played between two teams of nine players each, who take turns batting and fielding. The batting team attempts to score runs by hitting a ball with a bat swung by the batter, and then running counterclockwise around a series of four bases, first, second, third, and home plate.
popular culture or pop culture is the entirety of attitudes, ideas, images, perspectives, and other phenomena within the mainstream of a given culture, especially Western culture of the early to mid-20th century and the emerging global mainstream of the late 20th century. Heavily influenced by mass media, this collection of ideas permeates the everyday lives of the society. After graduating with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Film in 1967, he tried joining the United States Air Force as an officer, but he was immediately turned down because of his numerous speeding tickets. He was later drafted by the Army for military service in Vietnam, but he was exempted from service after medical tests showed he had diabetes. The studio system was challenged under the antitrust laws which sought to separate production from the distribution and exhibition and ended such practices. By 1954, with television competing for audience and the last of the operational links between a major production studio and theater chain broken, the historic era of the studio system was over.
Vertical integration and expansion is desired because it secures the supplies needed by the firm to produce its product and the market needed to sell the product. Vertical integration and expansion can become undesirable when its actions become anti-competitive and impede free competition in an open marketplace. Vertical integration is one method of avoiding the hold-up problem. The autocrat style negates any form of teamwork. The autocrat refuses to delegate authority, for fear of losing authority. With no new ideas or input, the organization gets stale, and tired. The autocrat is worn thin doing everything since no one is allowed to assist, leading to a general sense of incompetence of the subordinates. The difference between individual controlled action and outcomes is best conveyed through an example. In a sales job, a favorable outcome is a certain level of revenue generated through the sale of something such as merchandise, or some service such as insurance. Revenue can be generated or not, depending on the behavior of employees.
Another way to divide up performance is in terms of task and contextual behaviors. Whereas task performance describes obligatory behaviors, contextual behaviors are behaviors that do not fulfill specific aspects of the job's required role. Citizenship behaviors are defined as behaviors which contribute to the goals of the organization through their effect on the social and psychological conditions. An effect of drinking sports drinks with carbohydrates without prolonged exercise is weight gain. A study presented at the Obesity Society's Obesity 2012 scientific meeting found people in their teens gained 3.5 pounds over two years for every bottle of sports drink consumed per day. Human physiology seeks to understand the mechanisms that work to keep the human body alive and functioning, through scientific inquiry into the nature of mechanical, physical, and biochemical functions of humans, their organs, and the cells of which they are composed.
A behavioral change can be a temporary or permanent effect that is considered a change in an individual's behavior when compared to previous behavior. It is often considered a mental disorder. This change is generally characterized by abnormal thinking, interpretations, emotions, or changing relationships. Medications can cause this change as a side effect. Depending on the region of North America, the terms snowball and snow cone may refer to different things. Where the distinction is made, the former refers to a dessert made of finely shaved ice like soft fresh snow, while the latter contains ground up ice that is coarser and more granular and crunchy. Have you ever felt like you were a little bit different? Like you had something unique to offer the world, if you could just get people to see it. Then you know exactly how it felt to be me. Go ahead, Flint. <coughs> what is the number one problem facing our community today? Untied shoelaces. Which is why I've invented a laceless alternative book covering. Spray on shoes! Wow! How are you gonna get him off, nerd? <laughs> what a freak! He wants to be smart, but that's lame! <laughs> I wanted to run away that day, but you can't run away from your own feet. I'll play the audio again so you can follow the words along with the audio. Here we go. Have you ever felt like you were a little bit different? Like you had something unique to offer the world if you could just get people to see it. Then you know exactly how it felt to be me. Go ahead, Flint. <coughs> what is the number one problem facing our community today? Untied shoelaces. Which is why I've invented a laceless alternative book covering. Spray on shoes! I wanted to run away that day, but you can't run away from your own feet. <laughs> 